very different video today never know we do diesel engines but um i've been intrigued by these engines for a while uh, very sad really so a ford escort 1.8 turbo diesel now this is an indirect engine so obviously the uh that's a pre-chamber um and a flat piston and then basically the, the combustion takes part in a separate chamber with where the glow plug is etc um and then what i've done is i've had an idea the idea was to fit a tdci engine from a connect but using the um, original mechanical pump so basically we'll be using a, a direct engine in an old escort with the fully mechanical pump with one wire to the solenoid which is how i like it because i can fix it but what i needed to know was whether or not the pump was going to pop the uh, injector at the same pressure so this is an old school pump transit tdci injector like an 0304 plate thing um obviously it's a direct engine you can tell by the injector it's a completely different design to the uh, indirect engine so i just threw it in a lathe and turned it down to m12 by 1.5 because initially it was one m14 so then the nut wouldn't screw on so we'll fire it up and we'll see if it's popping off <coughs> Let's go out. The chain driven type um, TDCI engine, or I can put the piston, assuming it's all same dynamics, I can use the pistons and rods and the head from the TDCI engine and graft them into this uh, older style engine with the, with the two belts. Right, I'll uh, leave that out of that for now. Hi, and welcome to the P100 uh, TDI direct injection uh, project. Um, this is a bit of um, an odd issue that this particular engine suffers from uh, whereby the little end bush collapses so um, I bought this uh, transit connect uh, the early engine the TDDI is it before it became common rail um, I just bought it for the cylinder head and the guy said oh the bottom end's not out or whatever so um, it didn't interest me really but anyway when I took it apart the bottom end was mint it was just the uh, little end had collapsed so as it's happened, we've got to use these rods because these rods match the um, TDI piston, uh, the direct injection piston. So what I've had to do is I've had to put it in the uh, four jaw, push the old remains of the old bearing out, push the new bearing in, and then clock it up. And basically um, I've bored that now. Um, this is the, the pin. So goes in nicely there. It may tighten up because um, obviously the clamping forces of the jaws on the little end housing may disfigure it slightly so we might find it has to be finish honed just to get it perfectly round again but that basically is that bit done now so the pistons and rods assembly can go together and we'll get them in the block. Hi and welcome back to project 800 TDI uh, this is our P100 engine I've given it a bit of a clean um, as you can see it's got the mounts on the side so it kind of like a north south set up as it would have been in the sierra based uh, p100 obviously just to recap this would have been a um a uh, indirect engine so the uh the, the injection and the combustion took place in the cylinder had a little bowl and the piston looked like that which is obviously a flat top piston but what i've done is i've uh got the cylinder head from uh the the, the later transit connect which obviously has the um combustion in the bowl it's a direct engine and i've took a piston and rod from the connect and i've just given it a light home this block and obviously this is this is the old pre uh, in indirect engine and uh, lucky for us ford didn't change any of the specs journal size bore size all measures up absolutely spot on even the deck height is correct so um this engine which is actually believe it or not a crossflow engine <laughs> Um, you just can't tell because it's 
been beefed up a bit, but the actual, you could put a Lotus Twin Cam head straight on this. Anyway, I'm digressing. So, um, one piston's in, deck height's correct. So all we've got to do now is put the other four pistons in, sump back on the, um, the TDI head on it, and then we will see if we can get a tune out of it. Thanks for watching. Little update on Project 1800 uh, TDDI. So uh, we've got the P100 engine with the uh, Transit Connect head with the Transit Connect pistons and rods. Obviously that's a direct injection engine. And we've got the uh, original uh, mechanical pump with the one wire solenoid. So this is all ready for transplanting or we may run it on a dyno, yeah. I just wanted to talk for a minute about the um, turbo. So this is the original um, exhaust manifold and it used to run with a Garrett uh, old school type turbo with the, with the wastegate. Um, and what I've done is I found a turbocharger off a Mercedes 2.2 diesel engine, which was um, a variable uh, Venturi. So you can see I've had to elongate the holes a little bit and do a bit of messing. There's a little gasket there to line up the uh, the port. But basically, this now bolts straight onto the um, P100 manifold. So we'll have the benefits of uh, a variable vane turbo, which means we can um, obviously by changing the size of the, the vane, obviously, I just took this apart so you can see how it works. It will help to um, spool the turbo earlier so we can make use of the torque from virtually from idle. So you can see how it operates. Normally you'd have a turbo, I don't want to torque down to you, but normally a turbo has like a wastegate with an actuator. The actuator gets up to pressure, it opens the valve, the exhaust gases get bypassed straight past the wastegate rather than um, through the turbo so the turbo doesn't go any faster but with this it operates slightly differently normally on the vacuum operated system this lever here externally is attached to a, another actuator and this little peg it sits in here and basically oh god i've broke it already um it operates this set of veins you can't quite see them but when they're fully open like that, the gases are able to just go past the turbo without spinning it. So when it comes up to its boost pressure, there's no back pressure. That's the point of it all. And when it's in its closed position, the all the gases have to go through this part of the turbo. And obviously, it'll spin up like a really small turbo. So you've got basically the benefits of a small turbo with the benefits of a big turbo as well. So we'll see how all that works. It's that magical time of the week on a Friday at four o'clock when I uh, clock out of the, of the paying work and start messing with my own toys. So uh, this is the project um, TDDI mechanical pump. This is the uh, ambulance with the uh, stonking V8 in it, which is absolutely rudely uneconomical. So. I needed something to tow the race box with the race car in, so I chose to use this uh, 1800 diesel. Obviously, you'll see the other videos with how we've got to where we are, but it's basically a P100 engine with a mechanical pump and a transit connect cylinder head with the direct injection pistons and head on it. And it runs, so uh, I've just fired it up now. Um, I'll fire it up again. What's really interesting blew my mind this variable vane turbo fitted from um, a Mercedes Sprinter van with having no air pipes so the actuator isn't opening to uh, open the vanes it actually restricts the max RPM of the engine so it gets to about a thousand fifteen hundred RPM you can hear the turbo whistling but it will not rev you have to mechanically open the um, uh, the vanes to allow the air and uh, the back pressure to drop down and then it and then it revs so um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this all works because I've sort of reverse engineered. Normally, this runs on a vacuum and and then it pulls it shut when you start the engine. But we've got it the other way around now, so it's on a conventional actuator. So when it sees boost, it will open the veins. Anyway, more about that later. We'll put this here and uh, fire the beast up. <clears throat> so, well, it 
it's all a bit ropey. Just a half hour of excitement. I think the uh, starter was staying engaged there for a second. I've had to do some funky stuff because uh, this gearbox is from a petrol transit and the spacing was all wrong. The starter doesn't reach and the big wing sump catches. So it's got the wrong starter cobbled together just so we get a tune out of it. But now we've got a tune out of it, I'll bolt it all together properly and the next time it'll run will be in the ambulance.